Hey everyone, welcome back to the show, and welcome to the second part of my first double header. where in the last video we made ourselves a pretty convincing space scene uh, using some free tools with some customizable settings. In this one we're going to fill our space scene with some planets and a sun and you know some other, some other cool cosmic things. Because at the moment there is just the skybox and some deleted actors, not going to worry about that. So I've put together another care package for you guys, including three textures for the planet Earth sourced from a free location and then turned into a texture by me. I've included a, uh, a vertical blur mask and a cloud diffuse for our clouds over the planet, and just a sphere. I know that there's a sphere built into the engine, but, you know, I thought just for the sake of simplicity, it's nice to have my own. So to get started, we'll make the sun first. So drag our sphere in. Our sphere will be the Earth, but we'll use it to, to adjust lighting and that kind of thing before we, before we begin. So there's currently no lighting in the scene at all. We're just seeing a black, a black circle. So we can fix that by heading over here to modes and grabbing a point light. Dropping it in the scene, we'll set this to 0, 0, 0 as well, but we'll drag it over, give it some space here on the X axis, change our intensity to lumens, our attenuation radius, I think 4400 is a pretty good value, we'll pull that back slightly, and our intensity, we'll crank up until we get some, uh, some brightness there. And these weird lines that you're seeing on the on the ball here, on the sphere, it's due to the, the lighting. And as you can see up in the top left, the lighting just needs to be rebuilt. That's all. And what else can we do here? So source source length we can change. As you can see, that'll make this line pull up and lengthen our point light out. It also just sort of evens out the distribution of light hitting the hitting the sphere. So first of all, just to see how it looks, in fact, we'll go up a little bit more in, in our intensity. Might even pull it a little closer. So they have a nice bright light on the daytime side. And then to smooth out the light, just head up here to build this little arrow on lighting quality, just set to preview for now, and then build lighting. And the engine should just tick over. It shouldn't take long because there's only just the one sphere in the scene. And it's done. Map checks found some issues. No simple or complex. Yeah, that's fine. Receives a pre-shadow cause an extreme performance hit. All right, so we can turn shadows off of our ball. Casts a shadow, no. And collision. Collision presets, no collision. So if we save all, and you can see here that the, the light is now much more even across the face of our sphere, and we're ready to make our, our actual sun. So grab your sphere, hold it Alt, and then drag over to duplicate it. This one, uh, we'll make it somewhat smaller, so we'll set it to 0 0.75, the size of our other one, and we're going to put it behind behind our point light, somewhere sort of like that. This will be our sun, so it's going to be in a place that's it's far enough away so it doesn't appear too big or too small in the sky, but we can adjust these values later. And then down here we can just get started on making our sun. So make a new material, this one's our sun map. We'll open it up and we'll get into it. So we'll make two, three vectors, two colors here. We need them to be parameters. Uh, we've got our core color and we have our rim color. Let's say we'll set our core color to a brighter yellow, something like that. And our rim color to sort of a more warm orange. Something, something like, something like that, something like that. Cool beans. All right, and the way that we'll, uh, we'll make this effect happen, well, first of all, head over to our, our main node. We'll change the, uh, where are we? The shading model to unlit, just so that we, because it's not going to be lit, it's just going to be a bright light in the sky. And we will lap these two colors together and use a Fresnel function as the alpha. We'll get the, the big boy Fresnel function. Plug it into alpha. We need a scalar parameter. This will be our Fresnel power. Oh. <laughs> Fresnel power. We'll default it to one and just set this into power. Then out of our lerp here, we'll go straight into a multiplier with another scalar. This one's our glow crank. It determines how much how much the object's going to glow. Plug it into all of these nodes. And that's it for our sun material. We'll default this glow crank to say 15. Here we go. Nice. That's nice glowing sun. 
We'll save that one out, head back to our scene and make an instance of the sun mat. Drag it onto our sun sphere or into the material over here. Oh, it's outside the skybox. Or, oh no, we have to change the, uh, yeah, we have to change the exposure of the scene. So we're going to need to add a post-process. Post-process volume, make sure to set it to unbound. And then we'll find our exposure. So we'll check minimum brightness and maximum brightness. And we'll manipulate these values till we find, <laughs> we find something that works for us. Set minimum brightness to zero, 0 0.1. There we go. So our space scene is back. Our sun is really, really bright. And we're just using a, a simple post-process volume to, to get these values. Can we? All right, we might make the sky sphere bigger because it's currently not as big as I thought it was. There we go, that's better. Now we have a sun in the sky that we can, we can play around with. So we'll open up our instance from down here. So we can crank up the glow, make it uh, really, really bright, the Fresnel power to, to let between our, our two colors here. Might just leave that at one for now and might also make the sun just a little smaller, let's say 0 0.5. It's all just a matter of just tinkering with values until you get something that makes sense. Like if we go back to exposure. There we go, that's a bit better, a bit more bright in the sky. So we've got our point light shining onto our planet right here and our sun representing where that light is coming from. And we're ready to start making our earth material. And this is where things get fun. So make a new material. This is our earth mat. And we'll just open that up. And we'll drag in our three earth textures. In fact, we'll drag in all of them. We'll get all of these textures and drop them into our material. Cool, now we'll save the vertical blur for later. We don't really need that right now. And we'll uh, do switch it to the earth first. So the only way, like the way we make it rotate, the way that we make the, give the earth the rotation is with a panner node, which I've covered in previous videos. If you'd like a refresher, I think it's my heat haze video. So plug a panner into the UVs of all of these textures. And that panner is going to go on the X minus 0.2. Zero 0.02. And if we right click the texture here and start previewing node, we see the earth in, in beautiful rotating motion. Look, that's where I live. Okay, so the texture's looking good. That's all, that's all fine. We can stop previewing that now. And uh, we can work on, let's do the clouds first. So we drag our cloud boy up here. And we'll create another panner. You can just hold in P and click like that into UVs. In fact, we'll uh, duplicate these two because we'll, we'll do some we'll do some trickery with the panners and we'll overlay we'll overlay and mask out some things to make it uh, to make it look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more dynamic. So find your texture coordinates. Plug it both into that. And over here in the in the panners. So for the, let's say speed X, we'll go minus 0 0.05. And for the bottom one, 0 0.05 in the positive. We'll grab this bottom one here. We'll just put it straight into a multiply, multiply it by uh, the 0 0.25. This will help when they, when it comes time to overlay them. We'll get another multiply, multiply them together. And we'll just right click this and see how it looks. All right, so we got the start of some clouds. That's not, not perfect yet, but we're getting there. It's a good place to start. So from that, we'll, uh, we'll also get another multiply and we'll just multiply it by a constant, let's say five, and we'll give that one a look. Okay, so then we got some pretty, some pretty good clouds popping up, but there's more that we can do. So grab, uh, grab these three nodes, your texture coordinates, your panner, and one of the cloud samples. And we'll grab ourselves another multiply. The texture coordinates will go into this multiply and we'll get a constant just 0 0.5. We'll just blow up the UVs a little bit 
and plug that multiplier into the coordinate. Pretty simple so far with our panner. Our panner is set at minus 0.05, that will do. Come out of our texture here into a power. And you could use a scalar for this. I'm just going to use a constant just for the sake of brevity. Plug that into the exponent. And we're going to subtract these two, these two networks from each other. So this is going to mask over the top of what we made in the last, uh, the last little bit. So I plug this multiply from the bottom pair into the subtract. And then we'll go straight into a clamp. Just to zero to one. And preview the clamp. Yeah, much better. So we're getting a getting a much better cloud uh, cloud result now. Perfect. We can manipulate these values as well to, to, to change it even further. But I think that's working for us just nicely. So with our clouds done, uh, we can now move on. In fact, we can just straight up add our daytime Earth to our clouds and we can see how it looks on the planet. There we have Earth with clouds. In fact, to cut out this uh, color information that probably shouldn't be there, we can come out of our clamp into a desaturation node and then put that into the add. There we go, it just cuts out the, cuts out the Arrhenius color information from the, that's being generated at some point in our, in our tree. Okay, so we can stop previewing that and we'll just get organized over here, make some space. So these are all of our clouds, which we can just put out of the way now. And now we'll get to work on, let's say the, like an edge effect, like a, a glowy, a glowy edge effect for our, for our earth. And that's pretty simple. Uh, we'll just come, now we'll make ourselves a Fresnel function. We'll get a, a scalar for this, another Fresnel power. Just default to one, uh, a bit higher. We'll default to 2.5, like that into power. And we'll need a camera vector. Camera vector. Camera vector world space. Plug that into the camera vector. And that sets up our Fresnel. So if we right click that and preview it, yeah, we have a nice, a nice Fresnel function. And then all we have to do is lerp that between our, uh, our, our color, like our result. So grab yourself a lerp, use the Fresnel as the, as the alpha. Grab your add from earlier, plug that into the A, and then get yourself a color. Let's use like a nice pale blue in keeping with the, the tone of the realism. Plug that into the B value, and then we'll preview that. Okay, so it's a bit intense now, but we'll be able to, to dial in the values uh, at any point. All right, so we're gonna stop previewing that. And in fact, we can, we can help the, the edge along even further. If we come over here to our, our uh, daytime texture, we'll take this and we'll send it into a one minus node, which just inverts the values. And then multiply our Fresnel by that one minus and plug that into the alpha. Then if we start previewing. Okay, so it's looking a bit better. It's starting to look a bit better. So we can stop previewing that and move on to the next thing, which will be our, like our, our nighttime phase of the earth. So we'll make ourselves another three vector. We'll convert it to a parameter. This one's our light color or lights color. And I'm just going to default it to straight up white. But I think they're like, in reality, they're a little bit more sort of, a little bit more yellow, a bit, little bit warmer. We'll go from our light color into a multiplier. Make ourselves another scalar. This is the lights glow, like a glow crank, but for our nighttime lights, just default it to one. And then we'll put this straight into a lerp. So our multiplier will be the B value in this case. We'll get a constant for zero at A. The alpha is going to be our lights texture. That was a loud car. Well, we can do our roughness next, which is simple enough. We'll just come out of the red channel of our daytime diffuse map into a multiplier. And we'll make ourselves another scalar. This one's the roughness. And we'll set this up to massive. I think a thousand worked pretty well for me. Plug that into the multiplier. And then the result of the multiplier straight into the roughness channel of our final material. 
looks pretty strange with a, a cranked up roughness value. We can set it back down to one and have a look. Yeah, we don't want the earth to be that shiny. Okay, the next piece of trickery will be to have the lights come on when the when the uh, when the planet's rotated with its back to the sun. So in order to do this, we'll just use our vertical blur here to mask out the the backside or mask the day from the night. And it's pretty simple. We'll just use two laps to to make the effect happen. One for the emissive, one for the color. So we'll just plug that into color, and we'll plug this one into emissive, and we'll get our vertical blur as the alpha for both. It'll error out because we've got no values in it yet, but that's where these come in. So over at our nighttime texture, this will be the B value of our top lerp, our base color lerp, and our lerp from our clouds and our, and our daytime goes into A. And then for our bottom one, we'll just use a constant, a, that's just for zero, because we want the lights to be zero when they're facing the sun, and the result of this lerp as our B value. There we have it. So now you can see how these, how the uh, the lights are. The lights will transition to being off when the uh, when the sun's rotated, or when the planet when the planet has rotated to not be facing the sun. So as the planet comes around, the lights will fade fade into the daytime. Pretty cool effect. And now we're about done with our Earth material, so we can save that and get to work in the editor. Alright, so back in the editor, uh, we'll just grab our, where's our earth material, our earth map, let's make an instance, drop that onto our main sphere, it'll compile a little bit, because there's a little bit to think about. Alright, a little strange at the moment, but we'll, uh, we'll take some measures, we'll fix this up. So for one thing, it's facing it's facing backwards. Like it's not it's not pointing at the sun properly. So we're going to have to rotate around, get the right side of the Earth facing the right direction, which might take a little bit of dialing in. But it's looking all right. We'll turn on our values. We can drop down the lights power. So zero point one. Change the color to a more warm sort of yellow, yellowy orange. It's probably a bit too much. And we'll probably deselect it to get the gimbal out of my way. Let's rotate around a little more. So there we are. There we have it. And we can further, you know, we can further tweak these values, mask out some, uh, some other things. Uh, like for one, the, the clouds are a little bit quick. We can, we can change that in our material in these panners here. So say, we'll drop this one down to 0 0.01. We'll see how that looks. <laughs> that's, that's slowed it right down. 0 0.02. All right, again, you can set all of these as, as scalars to, to edit them in the, in the scene. I just thought for the sake of time, just make some constants and go from there. So let's see, let's change like our Fresnel power. We can make sort of a slightly better looking rim light, just like that. And it's all lining up properly with our lights on the rear side. So yeah, this is how to make a really cool looking earth material in Unreal Engine. Make some, uh, make some really fancy screenshots. Get some, get some sun over the horizon like that. Yeah, you can have a, you can have a real blast. And I just thought this is a really sweet effect that, uh, yeah, that, that just looks, looks great when it's, uh, when it's, in, when it's in editor. So thanks to you guys for watching. Uh, I hope this was good and, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ta-ta.